We called him as EP. EP? E EP. Really? Even when he was a kid? Yeah, EP. we called him EP. We didn't ever call him Elvis. And he's one of the white families. How many houses were white families? Four. So everyone else is African American, right? The uh -huh. whole area. Oh, yeah. Is EP like part of the gang? He was just a kid in his neighborhood. He wasn't a white kid or a black kid. He was a kid. <laughs> their thing going on musically. We just sang gospel. <laughs> what we heard in church. <laughs> he liked that. <laughs> he would go up there, yeah. just singing and jumping around, he'd do it too. And we just watch him. We would thought we was too cool for that until he started doing it. <laughs> yeah, they thought that boy and got to religion, that's what they thought. <laughs> it's almost an unbelievable story born of nothing, of dust. The things that happen in such a short lifetime are almost unimaginable. One minute, he's a truck driver, and the next minute, he's the most talked about, most provocative, most famous young man in the world, and he's a millionaire overnight. There was no precedent. It's not just lightning in a bottle. That's a comet smashing into the planet Earth. And all the fallout from that. He was a catalyst for so much. And he becomes an icon of such magnitude that there isn't a corner of the Earth that he hasn't actually touched. The story is a big American story, and Baz knows how to do that well. And it also is a musical story and Baz really knows how to do that well. I've always had a profound fascination with American pop culture. And if you want to explore the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you could not get a better life to use as a canvas than the life of Elvis Presley. He was at the center of all of it. I'm fascinated by the rebel, Elvis. He was this linchpin in society that shifted things. He shifted music, he shifted culture, he shifted fashion. To the young, he electrifies them, and he becomes their voice, and it's a voice of rebellion. I've heard him being referred to as the maximalist filmmaker Baz Luhrmann. I consider music, the script, and the visual language all as one for a story and a man as big as Elvis Presley. I think it's the only way to do it. He has the film in his head, but he's always enhancing those ideas. That's a beautiful shot. That's what we're chasing, guys. I have absolutely no question in my mind what I want things to look like, but there's a big difference between what I see, how you reveal it and create it and execute it, and that takes an army of artists. Baz works so differently in the best possible way. He has a sort of intense interest in every element, in every department. Catherine Martin, she can take my terrible scribbles and collages and executes it at a level which is really genius. He trusts the artist that he's cast. He trusts the people in the room. His confidence and his just like, just do it, commit, have a good time. You can't do anything wrong. Their trust in us is so precious. We owe it to those actors to surround them in a world where we keep fear at bay. He's really brilliant at cultivating these experiences that then go and feed the work so much. There was a method to Baz's madness. At first I thought, is he gonna drive us insane? And action, come on! And then I realized that yes, he is, and it's gonna be a wonderful trip. I owe him a lot for throwing me in the deep end. <laughs> we all know the icon of Elvis. It's very hard to live up to an image. I got a call from my agent that said, Baz Luhrmann's making an Elvis film. My friend said, you, you gotta play Elvis. 
I ended up filming myself singing Unchained Melody. Uh, here I was just in my bathroom and filmed it in my living room and I, I sent that off and then I got a call that Baz wanted to meet me. Austin went on an extraordinary three year journey to discover the human being. I learned about Elvis's mother and the fact that she passed away when he was 23, which was the exact same age I was when I lost my mom. Even if you have the most famous person in the world, that grief is universal. Portraying somebody who is so iconic, it's really hard not to feel like a little kid in your dad's suit. Austin makes such an obsessive, unbelievable work ethic, just relentlessly living, breathing, learning Elvis. Well, that's all right, Mom. That's all right for you. All the live performance of young Elvis, Austin sings himself. And then the latter stuff is a blend between Austin's voice and real Elvis. We went to Nashville and Memphis, and we recorded in RCA where Elvis recorded. It was my first time ever in a recording studio, and uh, I was so nervous. Moments like that pushed me so far outside my comfort zone that it was a feeling of, okay, well, we're gonna have to push through those moments because that's what Elvis would have felt. Music is so much about authenticity in our souls. What Austin did was to reveal the humanity and the spirituality of the man. Austin spent so much time working on his voice, working on his performance. The movement side of things, I had heard about Polly Bennett. What we see of him when he's 19 versus how his body changes gradually through performance and experience, that was a really key narrative thing that we had to develop in rehearsal. We did so many things. I mean, we, we did tap dancing, swing dancing, these things that seemed like they weren't for Elvis, but those movements, they all play into it. The feeling of spontaneity is though it's happening right now for the first time, but yet the movements are identical. Thankfully, I had so much time, so by the time that I was out there, I wasn't having to think about any of that. It just felt like I was able to look out of his eyes. You could not take your eyes off of Austin Butler. And it was Austin. No, it was Elvis. That's all you could say. That's Elvis. I felt such a weight to do him justice and to honor his family. Elvis, born at a time of segregation in the South, living in East Tupelo, in the black community, in one of the few white houses, the poorest of the poor in this very small town. He didn't have running water. They didn't have a bathroom inside. Elvis became part of this sort of little group of three to four black boys who would hang out. He's been exposed at the same time to the sacred and the profane, the blues, and also to Pentecostal music, spiritual music. And this is mixed with his love of country music. It's a beautiful thing, this American melting pot, where people of all cultures crash together and create something new. And rock and roll music is born of that. And Memphis is the hotspot for it. And Elvis is at the center of all this. Top of the morning to your friends from the home of colorful old Bill Street, the place where the blues began in Memphis, Tennessee. Ah, let's do it! Coming to Beale was not simply a musical experience, it was also a cultural experience. It was a medley of ethnic groups. I loved the scenes that we filmed in Beale Street. It was just so alive. We built the sets of Beale Street right here in Australia. It was like six city blocks of the most detailed street vendors and stores, and it was just incredible. Each decade had a color palette. For Beale Street, it's the young Elvis before he became famous. It's darker, it's grittier colors, classic greens and blues and earthy colors. We were able to orchestrate this incredible sort of busy, bustling city. You can get a sense of this is the real deal. You know, this is what Memphis was like. You Boy Crudder, Big Mama Thorn, Sister Rosetta Tharp. No one had ever played like that before. Baz really does understand how much storytelling can be done using music. Baz is deeply involved in ideas about how to recreate and rediscover the music of that period and to put it out there in a way as if people never heard it before. He's always looking for something real. He saw authenticity in what we were doing. This music you can't fake. You got these kind of singers in the room, something's gonna happen. The phenomena that is Elvis Presley is truly, truly hard for us to comprehend. He's just this young 19-year-old kid. Buddy Holly, when he first saw Elvis walk on the stage, said, I cannot overstate how strange he seemed. 
He was both incredibly masculine and feminine at the same time. Get a haircut, fairy! Elvis talks so much about his own fear, his own stage fright. Filled with terror to go out there and perform in front of a lot of people. Well, you may go to college, you may go to school, you may have a pink Cadillac, but don't you pick nobody's room now. But that was one of the main back, reasons why he started moving in the first come place, back, was, was just all this energy and stuff. Come back, baby, I want to play house with you. Let's play house! What are they hollering at? The wiggle! The what? Them girls won't see you wiggle! Come on back! The rock and roll neutron bomb. That's what he was. The atomic performer. Come back, baby, come on. Come he had this animalistic fire. Please, Lord, don't let him hurt my baby. Hurt him? Looks like they want him. Ah! There would have been no Elvis without Colonel Tom Parker, and there would have been no Colonel Tom Parker without Elvis. Are you ready to fly? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Ready to fly. The Colonel and Elvis, not even they could imagine just how successful he could be. Graceland, very much the symbol of his success. We want to build Graceland in the middle of the Aussie bush. There's Graceland. The proportions and all the architectural details are based on blueprints that we were very lucky to access from the estate. You walk in through this door and you feel like you're right in the real life Graceland. So from the get-go, we're copying a lot of reality. You go for the reality, go for the truth, but what you're also trying to elicit is a feeling, trying to understand what it really felt like to be there. The bedroom is pretty surreal because it's a space that very few people in real life have ever been in. It's velvet and satin and gold, and it was about him putting himself in this bedroom and closing it off. To see the sets and how much they feel like the real thing it makes you feel alive in every space. This new rock and roll thing. Who the hell is that? It was seen as something deeply threatening. The obscenity and vulgarity of this rock and roll music. The way you sing and move, it's God-given. So there can't be nothing wrong with it. It's hard to imagine just how deep the fear was of white kids embracing black music, and vice versa. The 50s were not this passive time. The 50s were rife with struggle. A few weeks before Elvis Presley walks into Sun Studios, the segregation laws are struck down. The political turmoil that was happening, it was dangerous to do what Elvis was doing. Some of the young people are very excited about this next day! There's a lot of people saying a lot of things. You don't so much as wiggle a finger. Of course, you gotta listen to the people that you love. I can't walk out. In the end, you gotta listen to yourself. I'm going to show you what the real Elvis is like tonight. It's like when Marlon Brando in The Wild One is asked, what are you rebelling against? He says, what do you got? If you're looking for trouble, you came to the right place. If you're looking for trouble, just look right in my face. I was born standing up and talking back. But if you're gonna start a rumor, don't you try? To an audience today, it's impossible to realize just how terrifying Elvis was to the older generation. So don't you mess around with me. Elvis is just so aggressive, and the guitars are blaring, and he's rolling around on stage. At moments, it feels like the birth of punk rock. Colonel Parker, we've called you in here to talk about this act of yours. Some people want to put me in jail because of the way I was moving. They're not going to put you in jail. They might put me in jail for walking across the street, but you a famous white boy. You put an end to your boy's animal behavior, or we will. From the Colonel's point of view, this association with rock and roll and juvenile delinquency, sexuality, black culture, was a fad. 
prove to the world that you are a clean-cut, all-American boy. And we put this whole unfortunate misstep behind us. Elvis would go off, serve in the army. He would be just a regular Joe. Isolated, alone, it's when he's in the army that he meets Priscilla. Colonel's promised me that when I get back, he's going to set me up in Hollywood to be a serious actor. That's really what I dream of. I think if you dream it, you'll do it. You do? Yeah. When Elvis returns in the early 60s, it's the pop period. It goes away from being rock and roll, and Elvis goes into the movies. They're all fun and colorful. They owned Hollywood. Anything they made turned into a river of gold. And the Colonel makes him the highest paid actor in Hollywood. But the world is changing. We have America being torn apart at the very fabric. We have Vietnam. He wakes up one day and he's lost. Now this presents this wonderful world of Christmas. All you can think about is how many goddamn sweaters I can sell. I am a promoter. That is what I do. I need you fellas to help me get back to who I really am. And who are you, Elvis? Well, sure as hell ain't somebody who sings Christmas songs by a fireplace for an hour. It's one of the most iconic moments in rock and roll history. I felt so much pressure and fear that goes along with that. This feeling of if it didn't go well, that my career could be over. I, I thought that's exactly what Elvis is feeling. Getting to wear that black leather was really powerful. Been a long time, baby. So much of, of my work ended up being influenced by what I was wearing. Costumes are part of helping an actor and a director create character. When you look in the mirror and you see the transformation, it makes you walk differently, breathe differently. That makes you truly feel differently. Walk through a party in a county jail. There are just so many iconic style moments. So it was very important to hit those particular markers. We have studied all the references to the nth degree. He had such a remarkable style. You look at any pop star today or any rock star today and, and you think they wouldn't be that way without others. Bobby Kennedy's been shot, everybody! This nation is hurting. It needs a voice right now to help it heal. It has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with us. You have to make a statement, EP. We have to say something. We could do a song. And together they stay up all night and they create that now iconic song, If I Could Dream. Reverend once told me, when things are too dangerous to say, sing. He brought this incredible truth to it. There must be lights burning brighter somewhere. We all have something to wail about. Got to be birds flying higher in a sky. We all have something to sing about from our soul. It wasn't just about making music. It was about singing something that needed to be sung. We're lost in a cloud. When he opens his mouth and he sings. With too much rain. You feel you know him. We're trapped in a world. You feel you understand him. That's and that's just a very particular gift. But as long as a man has the strength to dream, he can redeem his soul and fly. While I can think, while I can talk, while I can stand, while I can... I think I always admired the way that he brought meaning to songs, the way he phrased lyrics. Elvis picked a song, man. He picked it because there was something deep, deep, deep inside of him. Right
The film is really about America. It's about these two great things, the great cell and then the soul. I think the most challenging sequence for me, which was also one of the most exciting, was the international showroom. It's flashy and, you know, lots of lights and bright oranges and reds and yellows. You get lost in a place like this. Oh, the international stage. Man, that was such a massive thing. The biggest in Las Vegas. We had five cameras going. We had two technocranes. Baz sits there with all the monitors on. He's talking to everybody. He's like a conductor. <laughs> Been experimenting with a new big sound. Uh, bring that bass up, Jerry. In a room this size, keep playing. You could give them the greatest show on earth. Come, come. Elvis was an come. incredible artist. That's right. That's right. A genius that comes along only once in a couple of generations. Flames, man. Flames are coming off of the guitar. I got that. Honey. It's amazing to see the artistry and how he evolved. You ready? How his fashion evolved and how his music evolved. It's up the active. Yeah! Got it, Dave. All right, folks. On a one, three, four. You know what to do, man. Take us home. When he was at his most magical and most pure and most wonderful, most Elvis, was when he was interpreting a song. Without a doubt, Elvis made Vegas the showplace that it is. You're actually on the stage and you're looking down at the lights and the audience and everything and those gold curtains, the way they came down. And there's these certain moments where it transcends the feeling of making a film. Thank you very much. If this is an exploration of America in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, the 50s is so rebellious and so full of energy, youthful energy. By the time we get to the 70s, the American dream is unraveling. The American innocence is finally, finally falling away. I'm so tired of playing out this pressure. Elvis doesn't have anyone around him who can truly rescue him from this invisible cobweb. The only thing that matters is that that man gets up on that stage tonight. So that all that is left in the end is Elvis and the audience. And that is the only thing that Elvis lives for. And in between, he's the loneliest man in the world. Every time I watch that performance, my darling, it brings tears to my eyes. I've hungered for your touch. Because you see this big, sick body. Alone, you see charming young Elvis. You see the little boy in him shining through. Time goes by so slowly. It's just heartbreaking. Time can do. So much and then when he sings, it just you. It soars. Still it's beautiful. I, need your love. I always think it's this great moment when Elvis is playing, and then suddenly he looks at the audience and he smiles like a little boy. And it's a bit like, Am I good? Am I good? And the audience are like, Yeah, you're good.
was a child, I was a dreamer. I read comic books and I was the hero of the comic book. I saw movies and I was the hero in the movie. So every dream that I ever dreamed has come true a hundred times. Elvis only lived 42 years, but when you look at his life, it feels like he lived a hundred or more. There was a magnificent artist there. He's not just another rock star. The things that happen in such a short lifetime are almost unimaginable. Elvis Presley had a mythical life. 